Barrett. Here. Borough Engineer Kevin Brett. Here. Borough Manager Roy Collins. Assistant to the Borough Manager Cheryl Clark. Here. Police Chief Chad King. Here. Fire Chief Ray Costain. Southbridge EMS Dan Miller. Mr. Meglin's here from the fire. Oh. Yeah. Uh, we will call our first visitor, uh, Mr. Tom Robinson. Hi, this is Joe Estes. Twelve ninety nine on Walk Run Road. We're here to ask what's going on in the park. It's turned into a landfill. I don't understand where you are. A couple months, what's going on? So, uh, a couple things. Um, you are applying to apply for permits to have the park be done, and we're waiting for the permits to be approved. And then we're going to do the whole park at one time because that, that area where the ballpark is is being designated for flood mitigation. So we're kind of we're, we started doing some cleanup, but we're just going to do it all at one time. Um, we are aware that it has to be taken care of. Uh, so, as a matter of fact, I just got with somebody. We're trying to get some equipment in there to do the grinding, uh, stumps, and things like that. Put your home stuff in. Home stuff. I don't think so. Let me show you pictures. Are you saying like last no. week? Yeah, no. Okay. What if we never had it or something? Please tell me. Mm -hmm. I was not aware of that. So that. It's been going on for a couple of weeks. We'll check. I'm going to make a landfill. What's happening? The, the last time I was here, we talked about uh, turning important open areas left to the community to parking. I never got to respond to a couple of the questions you asked. Uh, what happens when you put a sizable parking lot in the middle of the community is what happened when we turned the, uh, that parking lot uh, next to Bergs between uh, James Street, Red Street extension into a parking area. To do that, we had to move to the county as a favor to us. Had to move two uh, doctor's offices and five homes. And at the time it was happening, uh, obviously the people were upset and were following us to that part of that. But after it was done, they were hugging and they ran into your giant eagle because of the money that they got for the property. And I think back then, I don't know about now, but the county was obligated to find the people other similar homes in perhaps different neighborhoods. And I, I, they were very happy about the results. The same thing I'm concerned about now is I thought, I mean, as we all know by now, the tax, uh, taxes paid by the people in Bridgeville are 50% 50, 50, 50 higher than their average uh, annual wages compared to the other communities primarily because our, we have no adequate business district. And what I'm concerned about is the property, and I referred to this last month too, the property next to the Dreon building and the Harmony building on Station Street, uh, uh, Quarterly with the uh, first Commonwealth Bank is the only vacant large section of land in our central business district. And I'm urging you guys to recognize the threat that this is to the future of the community. Uh, this, uh, this, that piece of land, by the way, was purchased within the last month. There's a Dreon building, there's the Arctic building. This, that whole former abandoned strip of the railroad. It's purchased by the people that own the Arctic building. And from what I'm, I've been told by someone who claims they know them, they intend to put a, a, a building occupying the entire space. And this is just a smaller drawing. If, they, if a building is occupying the entire space, considering that the legislative, the building code legislation in Bridgeville uh, is that. If, it's, if a building is constructed in the central business district, the builder doesn't have to provide any parking spaces. We've, we've had it. I mean, I really mean to say it seriously. In terms of the experts that you know I talk to from time to time, the, the community will never be able to recover from that. I'm asking you and the parking authority to get together on this. And incidentally, the park, I talked to Mike uh, a couple of times, 
And he said that they are making an attempt, but they are considering that purchase. And they're also, they're all, you know, the uh, piece of land directly across the street from the post office that the doctor purchased. And he, he was going to build a four story building there, which would require, again, more 35 parking space, which would have ruined the one parking lot. They're making an attempt to uh, negotiate a repurchase there. And, but, but the key to it is, despite the parking authority's efforts to do that, the legislation, <coughs> uh, the building code that allows uh, the builders to not provide parking in the central business district. I think it's a matter of legislation that you guys have to pass in cooperation with them. I just urge you, uh, this is really an urgent situation, I urge, urge you to recognize that and act before the next meeting, before they start calling no. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right. I can't think of anything. Oh, oh, one other thing. I'm really sure. uh, this is the area, if you're up on Washington Avenue, you're looking at the Dreon building here and the Arco building here, if you, if the borough or a party throw can purchase that lot, it, it's, it's not impossible to create another 24 parking lot above it, level, across the street from the Strasnick's hardware store. These types of things, you would connect, uh, you would create opportunities for a lot of new retail stores and offices to be built. What about the size of building with uh, storefronts and parking underneath? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. What if you had a building, a filter building, and you put parking underneath? Oh, yeah. yeah that's that's what that, 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 tax money from that building. Right. Yeah, and any, anything that I just picked up from the parking authority, which I'm sure it's all due. To build. Hey, please, uh, Bob, real quick, I don't want to. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Are they, where did you hear they're planning on building the building? I don't, I'm not trying to like. No, 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 I don't want to tell you. I don't want to tell you, but I was told just last week by someone who knows for sure. I, I just don't want to know for sure. That's fine. So I remember Dwight was know. always said, well, that there's a sore that goes through the middle of that. that you, can't, sure. you can't build it on top. You can't build a building on top of that area because there's a sore. I, 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 I remember I, I helped Koski get that land several years ago. I remember. I think he only paid forty or fifty thousand dollars for it, and then he had to pay seventy-five thousand to build a, a large a sewage thing down the middle. But I don't know if you can't build it. They, they put that sewer in when they did the, when they closed the, the bridge off. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, let's <coughs> not assume that they can't do it because the owners, I feel certain, intend to do it just that. And like I know, the Dreons. Have never seen any of this. They have no idea that their income from that building <coughs> double or triple. And uh, of course, they're going to say, well, they don't want to uh, sell their properties in the borough. But we, we aren't taking the property. We're buying it from them 15% more than whatever any of these lots are worth. So, uh, Thanks, Bob. Uh, Dale Livingston. <coughs> I presume. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. Hey. I come to you, I come before you, <coughs> representing the uh, Ridgewood Literary Alliance Club. We're having our third annual pasta dinner, which is Thursday, October 3rd, from 5 to 8 p.m. Um, it's going to be held at the Alpine uh, Club out in uh, South Fayette. Pasta, meatball, salad. I have tickets if anybody's interested. Um, the twelve dollars in advance, fourteen dollars at the door, and we'd love to see as many as you at supporting what we do. Um, in the past year, we provided two thousand dollars of flood relief to the fund. Um, we wrote a, the Bridgeville Greater Area Lions Club wrote a ten thousand dollar grant for flood restoration, um, which was put to buildings, um, residential buildings on Block to Run and Baldwin Street, so plus service hours. Uh, the, Bridgeville Upgrade Area Alliance Club has done a lot of service projects in the area, so we appreciate all the support. Thank you. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks, Thank Kevin. And Pat, please. Thank you. Not so much, but. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to invoke the name of William Colusi. Ask the question of the borough. When was the last time that the 
Public Works Department clean the McLaughlin Run. I mean, I know it was cleaned after the June 20th, 2018 flood. It was cleaned well at that point. Um, I don't know how much it needs to be cleaned right now, but I know that if I know that Billy Colusi repeatedly brought it up, and it took many, many years for him to finally get the Public Works Department to clean out the creek. So I'm bringing it up because he has passed on to just remind everyone that it needs done. I don't know, is it on any list? I'll check. I'm not sure. I haven't seen the public works list and seen what they got last. They were in the last week. I can tell you that after every rain event, they do inspect all yeah. the cracks and pull out any trees or overhanging falling in. They just pulled out a 16 foot long tree last week and cut it up. So they oh, are being diligent. There you go, last week. Then. Wait, wait, wait. Um, so they are being in. diligent after every rain how, how are they pulling them out or what are they? Probably with a backhoe. That's what I was trying to figure out. Is yeah. they, the guys go down and take care of whatever they did. 16 foot long. I don't know how wide it was, around it was. Um, all I know is that they took time and they, and they cleaned that up and they, they cut it up and cut it up. Great. Feats of strength. Yeah. <laughs> now, it's, but that's, that's important. The other, the other question is where do we stand, if at all? With the back channel of Chargers Creek, where at the, at the confluence with the uh, block and run, where we, as far as what cleaning as far out, as cleaning out the sedimentation, it is um, part of the grant we just yeah. sent in, right. and um, we are gathering information from the core because um, they did study that. We got that uh, late last week. So when do we think we're going to get something back on it? It'll take a permit. So the one that has to go in under the plot of board. Yeah. So maybe so the spring year. of next year? Probably. That's what I'm yeah. going to do. Government moves at a glacial pace. Yeah. Oh, it moves with great force. Thank you. Thanks, Pat. I want a regular uh, meeting. Um, motion to borough council to approve the minutes of August 12th. 2019 regular meeting as submitted. So uh, Bruce Garricci. Second. And Virginia Schneider. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, all those opposed? Motion carries. Motion to Borough Council to approve the September 2019 bill list. I'll move. Uh, Joe Gucci. Second. And Nina Pinicelli. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, okay. All those opposed? Motion carries. Motion to the Borough Council to approve the September 13, 2027, 20, and October, <coughs> excuse me, October 4 and 11 payrolls. So moved. Uh, Bruce Gallagher. I'll second. And Bill Henderson. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Motion to the Borough Council regarding ordinance number 1011, amending the Borough's Code of Ordinances. Chapter 7, Fire Prevention and Fire Protection, adding Part 6, Emergency Services, Cost Recovery, to authorize and establish rules and fees associated with recovery of emergency services, costs incurred by emergency service provider. So moved. I'll second it. Uh, Bill Anderson and Virginia Schneider, all those in favor? Aye. Uh, all those opposed? Motion carries. A motion to the Council. Regarding resolution number 2019-09, accepting the municipal winter traffic services agreement between the borough of Bridgeville and PennDOT for the winter seasons of 2019 to 2020, 2020-2021, 2021-2022, 2022-2023, 2023-2024. Uh, agreement includes adjustments to offset severe winter storms equal to a percentage of the department's actual cost, similar for road services, over and above the five year average. Uh, the agreement may terminate prior to September 15th for any year agreement is in effect. Um, okay. 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 
<laughs> I'll second. Uh, Joe Rucci? Second. Second. Bill Henderson? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, motion to borough council regarding the receipt of the minimal municipal obligation worksheet for the police pension pension plan for budget year 2020 as prepared by manager Collins. So moved. Uh, Bill Henderson? Second. And Joe Colosimo, all those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Motion to the Borough of the uh, Motion of the Borough Council regarding the receipt of the minimal municipal obligation worksheet for non uniform employees pension plan for budget year 2020 as prepared by Manager Collins. Uh, Bruce Gallagher-Gucci. Second. And second by Nina Picicelli. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. A motion to the Borough Council regarding the bid for 416 Darby Way Environmental Assessment. Uh, remarks to proposals received with the following uh, results. Consultant uh, AGX Incorporated for the bid base amount of $950, oh, sorry, $950 and Vols Environmental Services Incorporated in the amount of $1,900. Um, bidding on envelopes here? Uh, was a move to accept uh, AGX for $950. So uh, Bruce Gallagher, second. And Joe Plasmo, all those in favor? Aye. Uh, all those opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Um, okay. A motion to borough comments regarding the bid for McLaughlin Park ADA restroom renovations as bid by Char West Cod. Uh, if the borough chooses to award this project, it is imperative that your motion include the following language. Motion to award contingent upon CDBG grant funds being confirmed by Allegheny County as received from the HUD. Uh, sealed bids were opened in the Charter West Cog offices on Thursday, August 29, 2019 with the following bid results. Uh, select Contracting LLC with a base bid amount of $57,762. Uh, add the alternate uh, number one amount of $10,000. Contractor uh, Newman Plumbing Incorporated with a base bid amount of $68,296 with an ad alternate number one amount of $7,850 and JLD Construction LLC base bid amount of $89,000 and an ad alternate number one amount of $13,900. Uh, CDBG year 45, 7.2 estimate grant funds for the project total of $34,000. Amount would be paid out of the general, the balance of the amount would be paid out of the general fund. Is there a discussion? Mr. Um, Chairman, the, uh, good, good, good. Working over uh, the bids, uh, a lot of the cost of your items were like paint. Painting inside the building and outside the building. And uh, it seemed a little bit high. I was thinking our guys could do it, but I don't know if we're allowed to do that. I, somebody that I know, that I live with, told me that back in the day when they used to bid on stuff, they would put it out for bid one, two, or three times. And borough people were permitted to do it. I don't know if that's, that was a long time ago. Do you ever hear anything like that? Uh, yeah, you can uh, you can remove items. I don't know because it was bid through the call. Maybe you can do a change order and deduct it. We have to ask uh, the call because it would be about six thousand dollars. What's that? Would be about six thousand dollars of a deduct. So it's it's over ten percent um, of what the award would be. Um, the ad alternate was uh, some painting on the outside and the rafters on the uh, ceiling, plus uh, a little bit of the ceiling work as well. But there was painting of the interior because we were doing so much disturbance uh, on the interior. So um, uh, we got to check with them. Um, we're not in the 
Big Pig hurry to do the work, but I don't want to lose the grin either, so I mean, that's... Are we in danger of losing the grin? Um, okay. Well, it sounds like they, um, they would like to see you do the award, but they don't actually have the money, so they want, to, want you to put that contingency in the award. Um, the money doesn't show up to you, then they, they wouldn't let us do the contract anyway, so... Um, I mean, you could award it contingent on deducting items four and five, and then I can call her tomorrow and check. Uh, no problem. I'll make it. I'll make it. Second. All right. Uh, motion by Bruce and second by Virginia. Yeah. All those in favor? Yeah. Can I ask one question? Is, is, is there an issue with that if that would change the low? Bid. It would not change the little bit. Accept and pay commissions due August 2019 real estate tax collector report. I'll move. Uh, Joe Gucci. Second. And Joe Scott Gucci. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, all those opposed? Motion carries. Motion to accept the July 2019 financial report. I'll move. Uh, Joe Gucci. Second. Nino. Petrocelli. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, all those opposed? Motion carries. And motion to accept the August 2019 police report. So moved. Who's that, Bill? Bill. And, so. and Bruce, you all, you all those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Yes. We haven't got three more. The three so resolutions for the chief. Oh, I'll, I'll just bring it up during the um, report. Okay. Do they approve that? Yeah. 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 I'll just do it during the report. Okay. Perfect. Gotcha. I didn't forget about you. Just want to make sure. Yeah. No. Um, committee reports, administration. I don't have any reports. All right. Uh, finance. Nothing really to report other than uh, taxes are due and when is the discount? Discount was in uh, August, so now uh, you're at the stated rate. So please. Send in your tax as soon as possible so you don't get hit with any uh, of the weight charges. That's all I have for that. Thanks. Uh, Parks and Rec, Joe, okay. you can do the discussed already. <laughs> well, aside from that, uh, not really, I guess picnic season started the one down. Uh, the other parks are in pretty good shape as far as it goes. Uh, I got something from the COG, which, which you guys got. Uh, this thing came up pretty quick. There was a grant available for some uh, sidewalk work, curb handy patching, more than anything. And I believe our engineer, and I know Bill bought them that, and checked these things out. And we submitted, submitted an application for the grants for 38000 bucks, And it's. Successful handicap sets in the ranch at Murray Avenue, Shady Avenue, Chest Street, Station Street to create an accessible route for handicapped pedestrians. The current ramps may be difficult or dangerous for handicapped pedestrians to traverse. So hopefully, if you can pick up this stuff in three months, so that's all I got. Great, thanks, Joe. Uh, public safety, Bill Henderson. Um, Skipped over Nino. I don't know that. But that's it. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. Nino. It's okay. It's okay. Nino. You got oh, my, I had my notes on my notes. It's okay. Ran into other parts. <laughs> you got my. Uh, uh, you got everything on my text. But I noticed here. Well, I had a notice. I know the creek has been cleaned right after the um, the, the rain we have. Clean all the debris, etc., etc. The maintenance was done. Also, it was a maintenance was done. We removed some trees out of the park that fell to the wind and everything. So, 
some of the things we mentioned from the public and from Pat, so partial of that that's done already, Pat, but uh, I'll look at it tomorrow in more detail. Thanks, Nina. So, I'll just Mike, we're continuing to work on some of the parking issues with the committee and the solicitor down on uh, St. Clair Street, we were talking about exploring opportunities to help alleviate some of that uh, uh, issue that we have. Uh, one other thing I wanted to mention, I attended one of the, uh, the Bridgeville Preparedness Planning meetings with, with Del Livingston and his group that he's assembled with um, places of worship and other um, groups within the community. And it was really, really interesting to attend. And, and uh, I wanted to thank Dale and, and all those folks that are getting together to talk about being ready for that next event. And so they're very proactive. And um, there's a lot of good conversation about being ready for that next, you know, hopefully it never comes, right? But uh, in the event that it does, I think we've got good people spearheading that group. And, and uh, I look forward to continuing to work with them. Last thing I want to do is um, thank the, the police and the fire department for showing up at the Chestnut Street block party. Um, always a good, you know, example of what they do for the community there. And, and uh, we appreciate you guys being there. Even though they didn't show up at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Please wait until the firemen got out of the way and they, they, they talked about you left and right. We don't want to make them look bad. Mayor Betty Cook, welcome back. How was your trip to Parkland? It was a great celebration. My great granddaughter's first August was a busy month. I attended the 125th celebration for Carnegie. Prior to going, I sent a letter of congratulations to the mayor. She met me in front of the Historical Society building on the day of the actual celebration, and we had a nice conversation. August 28th, attended the breakfast for Celebrate and Share. It's a group that recognizes the achievements of women while also celebrating the 99th anniversary this year of the 19th Amendment, giving women the right to vote. This year they gave the 19th Spirit Award to State Senator Pamela Ivino. Also, I presented a proclamation to Boy Scout Troop 2 to John Self, who beautified the gardens at uh, Our Lady of Grace Church for his last Eagle Scout project. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, Police Chief. No report, Council President. Perfect. That means nothing happened. <laughs> well, what's happening? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Solicitor. Thank you. You have my written report. Um, the only thing in public uh, interest but is uh, I'd like to thank uh, Chief Costain for helping with uh, finalize that uh, reimbursement orders with the fee schedule and whatnot. And actually, Mike and I were talking this weekend. They want to have us take a look at updating the um, false alarm and a couple of the other fire safety rules as well. Awesome. Uh, Bureau Engineer. Uh, yes, we did uh, submit our report dated today. Um, road program, we're going to have a quick construction meeting to get that kicked off. Uh, get the road program completed. Um, the different uh, projects we submitted permits on, gangway access point, where those plans revised. Um, the changes to where you're going to drive straight in. Um, there's a log system um, that's basically a gate that's removable. Um, whenever um, it would keep the water in the street, and after the flood event's done, you would lift the machine, lift them out, set them on the side. They're not real heavy, um, but they walk together. Yeah, cool. And then you take those out, you drive in, you clean out the street, and you put it back in so that during the flood event, those businesses are protected. Uh, we also, there's a couple inlets there. Um, we reconfigured that uh, on the plans uh, and put a backflow. Uh, basically, it's for the, the pipe. So when the stream comes up, water doesn't come up out of that catch basin. Um, water, if it builds up enough, it'll push back out into the stream. Um, but it's the worst of two evils. We don't want water getting coming up out of that catch basin and flooding that street and stuff. Um, we think that, that should be a big help. So that's ready to go in for a change permit. We're talking to DEP to see if that actually requires a change. If it does, we're going to submit that in. 
Commercial Street Wall project. Um, we have talked to DEP um, about that because we're preparing a conceptual plan uh, for that. And they're going to consider that, we believe, to be a levy um, once it's built because it's going to increase the height along the stream. Um, uh, it does require a meeting with DEP to go over. So once we get a good concept plan prepared, we'll uh, set up a meeting and we'll keep our deal with this. And we'll have a discussion with the department to uh, get that permit started. Um, uh, Maple Street Wall, it's been submitted. Permits under review. Um, they did call for a few comments on that um, uh, because of the height of it. Um, they're getting concerned about that. Army Corps, like I indicated earlier, they did submit September 2nd, or the week of September 2nd, the disc. So we do have the appendix, the appendix now, and we're reviewing that. Um, the commercial street uh, culverts, um, we did submit the uh, application for those to be cleaned. Um, so um, 60, 90 days, we want to have that on um, the clean out because they are the ones about a third full. Um, we need to be permit to clean that out. Um, next is the GDF grant uh, applications. Uh, there's three different packages. Uh, we put these in. One was the Fargo Road uh, stormwater complaint. That uh, was for 98,200. Um, the minimum grant amount is 500 when you read the requirements. But in all cases, we were asked by our communities and they were requested uh, by various people to submit less than 500. So this one is less than the 500 minimal. I don't know how they're going to react to that. I don't know if they're going to react positively. Um, I don't know if that's the case or not. So we'll wait and see what they say on that one. Uh, the other ones we grouped into the $500,000 grant amounts. Uh, we called the one McLaughlin run flood mitigation. Uh, that was the Janeway ramp, commercial street call to cleaning, channel cleaning at the um, at the end of the stream, mm -hmm. um, down where it connects to the back channel, uh, lowering the ball field, um, and the trash rack. Um, track rack, this is a very cool set of trash. But, um, okay. Spell check. Uh, and then the other one was borrowed by retaining walls. She had three retaining walls. Um, so we put Maple Street, Werner, Werner Street, which is applied for a grant elsewhere also, and then the, the wall we just talked about that required 105. Uh, all total is about 1.5 million uh, uh, in submittals, um, about a million won in grants, they'd have about $400,000 match. Um, if we could just get one uh, of those grants, that would be a great thing. So, um, And then, depending on what uh, may get funded, the next cycle, submit again. Um, so that process is ready. I do have those. The uh, next cycle's in April? Or yeah, it comes basically um, once a year. Yeah. Um, this cycle here was a little bit later, but mostly it's around April. Um, that these are going to be awarded come November. Is, is the time? Um, that's, that's quick, um, but I have indicated that's going to be the case. Um, next is the um, CDBG. Um, the request went in for the five ramps, as indicated earlier, um, for 35000 uh, Backflow for runner project. Um, we are preparing the contract documents, and uh, bids open on the 26th for that. That's the second contract you've had on that. You already talked about the McLaughlin uh, restroom. Um, we did look at that estimate. Uh, that's pretty close to what it should have come in at. We had it about 56000 and it came in at 57000 um, We compared it to, uh, somebody indicated multiple bids. We had two or three other ones. We've had to bid two or three times, and each time we've tracked the, the pricing, taking things in and out. So we have, we have a pretty good track record now in these restaurant projects. Uh, they all come in higher than what people think they're going to, so it's, it's kind of still a typical so. Um, and the last thing you just look at Sean, was the uh, uh, structure demolition. Um, we will put those specs together and that will be ready for your next meeting to award. Okay. Um, the asbestos takes about two weeks to get checked. So that's all. You need us to do a motion for the grants? If you can, for the GEDF grants um, for the three resolutions as indicated. Uh, I'll make a motion to have them submit to the grants applications. That's so moved. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, all those opposed? Uh, Mr. Preston, since Kevin uh, talked about street, I want to ask him later, but that's what I'm asking you now. Is something we could do with Bank Street, would you be able to get in touch with uh, Pendon? I mean, Bank Street is bad. Okay. I mean, that's. I didn't want to say I was a little boy when they did it, but they did it well, though. <laughs> 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 But that's, that's <laughs> time. That's something to somebody can get on. We can reach out there. Please. Thank you.
know, I know Scott had complaints from yeah. several people that complained about it. One in particular, but yes. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, Ray's not here. Since you did it, Mike's here. Yeah. Uh, good, uh, busy month for the month of October, or um, August, I mean. We had uh, 32 t total calls, uh, two building fires, <clears throat> 12 medical assists, uh, three motor vehicle accidents, we had a gas leak, and then numerous little calls from water problems, uh, down power lines, public services, total 32. We had a, what on um, Friday, August 23rd, another uh, house fire broke out on Union Street. The family lost everything. The fire department, according with the uh, family, is so hosting or uh, doing a couple fundraisers. We're going to make where there's a spaghetti dinner this Sunday from 12 to uh, 5 at our fire department. The Steeler game will be on. So people come down, have dinner, support the family. All the proceeds go toward the family. So no excuses. You guys can watch the uh, Steeler game. <laughs> Sometimes that's an excuse for some people don't want to know. Not the last night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> further details and times what we do uh, the comedy show um, night with them so uh, that's about all I have. Thank you very much Mike. Uh, Dan's not here. Uh, Mary Weiss, the storm was just I was going to try to be brief but that's tough. Uh, thank you very much. I hope all of you remember 7 o'clock this Wednesday night is the, quote, anniversary, unquote, of September 11, 2001. It will be held at St. Um, well, you can tell I've been here a long time. Holy Child Church at 7 o'clock this Wednesday night. I hope to see many of you there. Uh, next item I have to talk about is that Saturday and Sunday, the 21st and 22nd of this month, our American Legion, Post 54, is celebrating 100 years of existence. 100 years since the end of World War I. So, it's an open house, I don't have the hours, but keep tabs on it, hope you drop in. Then, the last Tuesday of this month, the Historic Society is back to professional uh, educational speakers. And this one is at 7.30, what is that, the 24th of this month, at the Fire Hall. And it is about presidential elections and the various ways that the president-elect used all the different methods to get his name, her name out in public and, and whatever. So that's the first one. Uh, we will have two more before the end of the year. The second one is two days before Halloween, and it is all about the house in Redwood that is Ghost City, USA. Uh, that is a per another professional talk. I will not attend that one. I'm sorry. I, I, Anyway, the very last one is interesting. It's two days before Thanksgiving. And the speaker, I think her father, was Mike Abrams. And if so, this is his daughter, Georgine, who has written a book about Pete Calibro and then the two Syrian relatives of hers that were all captured in Germany under the Nazis and they ended up in the same place, all three of them. So she has written a book, working for the government. She had access to other that we would not have. So her speech, the Tuesday before Thanksgiving, I urge you all to attend. Um, then the first Saturday of October, the first Saturday of November and the first Saturday of December, 
The Historic Society will be open from 12 till 3. We're going to try it. Hopefully we'll pick it up again in February. Uh, it takes one retired school teacher and, and me, and we're going to try it. Um, you're all welcome to bring grandchildren and come see what we have. Then, the last thing I want to mention is it's been a tough year for everybody and I've lost some very good friends this year. So, I, in light of everything going on, I just want to say to all of you, thank you very much for serving this community and I hope we can get ill people back up on their feet, able to help us, and just want to thank everyone for what you've done for the bird of Bridgeville. I say thank you. Thank you, Gary. Thank you, sir. Uh, we may wait for the library. We started the Love Your Library campaign. Of course, everybody loves the library, right? Uh, September is particular because any donations received that month were eligible for a prorated match for the Jack Luncheon Foundation. So, if you notice, right on Bridgeville, we've got signs throughout the area Love Your Library. So, that's the campaign going on for the month of September. Then, on the 29th, in conjunction with the uh, firemen there having the open house, we're having a lawn party and family fun day over at the library, one to four. I was going to give you some flyers you could leave at the yeah, so we're free of charge, actually, for $2 per person for kids, uh, under four free, and gain activities for the, the day, for the afternoon, just an open uh, event for the afternoon. That's all from the library. Then. You should have something married that same day, have like a walking tour. Well, that's, yeah, the, the flyers, because then the firemen are doing something that day as well. Yeah, fire, we're not saying firemen stop the historical side of the library. Yes, we are. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Parking away from the parking authority, uh, planning commission, anybody? Dale? You know? Nope. Uh, anything for a manager's report? She did not submit any. Okay. Old business? New business? Uh, Mr. Chairman, yes. sorry, I want to mention this to ask uh, Kevin. It's if you brought to my attention, uh, Kevin, when you have time, maybe you can take a look at it. Chestnut Street is a long street. We have only one catch base for the water, okay? We, and that goes all the way to Bank Street. From Chartier all the way to Bank Street, it is an evidence. So I look over there, I don't know where would be the connection. I can't see any other one. When you have a chance, can you look at it? It is one on almost close to Bank Street, but coming from uh, Chartier is none. So. It's a pretty long street, I think. We shut up reasoning. Like a reason catching this. Water, water. It's, 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 it's only storm one. Water. It's storm it's water. Storm water. It's storm water. It's storm water. This is storm water. It's a bird. It is only one at the end. Nothing up there. It should be. You can look at it. The one house, the one neighbor that you have that has the problem with the ice in the wintertime from all the water? Tim's um, yeah, yeah. mother's home? Yeah. Oh, the house. Yeah. yeah, she was talking about that the other night, okay. asking about that. I don't know if you remember. It could be related to that. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I, I uh, mean, but it was in front of that. I've been that approached house. that, so what? that's the reason I bring that up. Yeah. So let the that? engineer look yeah. at it. You were going over it. I, I was so. <laughs> Off the record. Uh, any other new business? Oh, I, I have one more thing. Um, I've had a few people on Drake Street ask about the trees that everybody is all concerned about. Um, uh, my main concern is the branches that are pretty long going across the street. And I'd hate for one of those branches to fall on a car. I know, I know. Um, I think pointing the tree thing. <clears throat> but I think something, at least those branches going across, needs to be addressed. Well, since the fireman's here, maybe with a letter, if it's not danger, maybe with the public work, maybe the you can take a look at some of those branches until yeah. so we get the professional people to some of us. 
Uh, I'm talking to Ray. See, I can talk to the Ray. We have to have somebody come in and do it. We have to have somebody come in. Just temporarily. Some Ray and the ones that are just over the street part. If they're not laying on wires and, or they can't fall on wires, that's one thing. But if your public works are not certified to, okay. to do this. Crazy wires. I'm looking at the you can see where I have to take a look and see what we can and can't do. Yeah. I mean, legally, you can cause trees in your airspace to be removed at the same time. Just because they're in your airspace, they're not your ultimate responsibility. Well, obviously, if there's an overriding public safety, you can go yeah. clear trees yeah. in your airspace. And a lot of folks believe that the trees in front of their house, well, it's interesting if you ask folks the law on the trees, when they're healthy, folks often believe they're theirs and you're not allowed to touch them, but when they die, they're yours and they want you to take so them out. So they belong to? Tom? The borough, from my research and talking with the board over the last couple of years, and we've had many of these situations, we've never had to shade trees, we've never caused to be planted in our right-of-way trees. So they're not technically the borough's uh, ultimate responsibility. Obviously, public safety is. The, the point is, is that adjacent landowners or their predecessors who caused those trees to be planted, and even, you know, on Greg Street and all those, if you look at those, they're pretty uniform. They may have been planted by a developer in 19, for who knows, you know. Still, those are the landowners. But the question is, Tom, they are dying. At the same time, if you well, some of them are living, some of them are, are not. Yeah, it's um, true. But if you have ones, Mr. Uh, Councilman Verducci's alluding to ones that are possibly clear and present danger, you certainly have the power to go in and, and cause that to be removed. Well, a couple of bridges are really uh, damaging cars, really bad. They took the top completely. Yeah. Yeah. Let's take a look. All of them, or some of them? Yeah. Uh, we have to have some guidance on why we're doing this. Guidance? Yeah. <laughs> we talked to Lady, she thinks we're going to I mean, Lady has some way to um, have, 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 have our guys go you know, and walk straight and see, because I know specifically towards the end, towards the back, there's water, it's, just, it's so obvious, it's gigantic. It's, I mean, it's this huge branch goes straight on at 90 degree and it comes almost all the way to the other side of the street. That's it I'm wondering. So, I know. I just don't want to see something a tree fall on it. Or a branch fall on it. I really need a tree. And it would be a homeowner. They're not dead, yeah. but they are getting up. Yeah. That, that, that and wild heavy storm we already had others large, large, large like the last really yeah. bad storm we had was we had the yeah. large branches fall down. They're not dead, but there are branches that fall down. Motion to adjourn. All those in favor? Uh, 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 uh,